I'm Linda, and I'm going to show you a couple ideas about how to take these boring, uninspired, homely terracotta pots and make them into something more beautiful for your home. So the first technique I'm going to demonstrate, you use white acrylic paint, you sponge it on and let it dry, and then cover it with a layer of transparent metallic paint. Liquitex Basics has a gold paint that I've used for this technique, but I didn't have any of that on hand, so I mixed my own colors. I took um, acrylic paint and I mixed a powdered metallic pigment into it. I just happened to have that on hand, but I also had a couple other colors that I tested. One was an antique gold and one was a brass. I didn't test silver, but you could certainly try that. The technique is to paint the metallic on transparently so that the white paint shows through and the terracotta, the color of the pot, shows through and creates a two-tone effect. So I have this copper color that I'm gonna test. And when I first start out, it's definitely too opaque. So I add a little water. You want the metallic paint to be transparent so that the white is showing through and the terracotta color of the actual pot is showing through to give you this two-tone effect. So I actually like all three of them, but I decided to go with the bright gold. Here I have a piece of an old natural sponge, so I'm gonna test it to make sure I like the pattern. And I just play around with it until I find something that I like. And you don't want it to be too repetitive, so you could even turn the sponge as you're, as you're sponging. I ended up cutting it to make a new surface. So it was the it was just too blobby and I wanted it to be more open. So like I said, play around with your pattern, make sure you like it before you start sponging on your pot. So while that dries, I'm gonna work on my other pot and I decided to do a stencil with contact paper. So first I just drew a shape and cut it out of poster board so I could use that to trace on the um, contact paper and cut out these shapes that I'm gonna use as a stencil.
So you're going to peel the back of the contact paper off and stick it to your terracotta pot. And you want to smooth down the edges because we're going to paint around it and we want this to act as a resist. I'm just brushing this sort of haphazardly. I'm not worrying about the brush strokes showing up. I'm hoping that it's gonna look kind of aged and textured. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step. I'm gonna go back to the first pot that is dry now and apply my metallic paint transparently.
For the second pot, you want to remove the contact paper before you add the next layer of paint. So for this pot, I'm planning to do a mosaic rim around the top. And these are the tiles that I have, you know, from somebody's bathroom somewhere. Um, I've just been dragging them around with me for years and now it's time to use them. So I went a little off script here and decided to mix a color that matches the tile that I'm going to use. So it's silver um, with a little bit of light green mixed in, but then I end up using gold on top of it anyway. I was trying for like a Mediterranean look. So let's just see where this goes. So I end up working it sort of like a little patchwork, a little bit of gold, a little bit of the green silver color, and just cover the whole pot like that.
Don't forget to paint inside the rim um, because the dirt won't go up all the way and it won't look finished unless you paint inside the rim about an inch and a half down. Okay, now we're ready to break up our tiles. This is kind of fun. I like to wrap the tile in a piece of canvas. I find that it's um, easier to, to kind of sense where you want to hit the tile. So I give it a good pound. I open the canvas and kind of look where the break has happened, close the canvas, and direct the uh, hammer towards where I want to break the pieces to be a little bit smaller. Just going back and forth so I can kind of judge how big these pieces are, how small they are. If you just smash away, you'll end up with a bunch of crumbs and maybe not workable pieces. So I'm looking for medium sized pieces that will work well together. You definitely want to cover the tile that you're smashing because you don't want a chip of the ceramic tile to go flying towards your eye. Um, you could use a piece of cardboard but like I said, I think the canvas works well. Um, it makes for easy cleanup because it kind of keeps the crumbs all together on the canvas. But if you don't have canvas or a heavy fabric like that, two pieces of cardboard would work just fine. If you don't have anything to cover the tile with, make sure you wear protective eye gear. Another way to get some really predictable sized pieces is with tile nippers. So here I'm holding these down and away from my face or I probably should be wearing um, protective eye gear. So just be careful while you're doing this, but it's, it's really easy to um, nip these tiles into, sh into usable sizes. I'm using a product that is adhesive and grout all in one. I'm using a palette knife to apply a thick layer of the product on the terracotta pot. Now I'm going to adhere the tile pieces to the pot with a little bit of space between them. You wanna make sure you're not pushing them right next to each other because you want to fill the, the spaces with grout and make the spaces even, not too far apart. So I might have to use the tile nippers to change the, the size and shapes. It's kind of like uh, working a jigsaw puzzle.
Okay, now once you get the whole rim mosaic, you just have to let it dry. I probably let it dry overnight, but read the directions on the product. Uh, maybe a couple hours would be sufficient. I'm using the palette knife again and trying to get the product to go in the cracks and fill in on, and then I'm just trying to smooth it over as much as possible. I let this dry a little too long, so the grout is really dried onto the ceramic tile. So I'm using a wet brush, and then I use a rag, and I end up using a razor scraper, which works the best um, to get off the grout, to get the grout off the um, ceramic tile. The last step was I used a sanding block to sand off any sharp edges. You gotta kind of be careful with the um, ceramic tile and the grout didn't seal that bottom edge there, so I'm sanding that. The top edge, I just fill in any cracks or holes along the top edge and smooth it with my finger. One last step I recommend is to put a couple coats of clear matte varnish on, matte or gloss actually, acrylic varnish. Um, this comes in liquid form that you can brush on or sprays. This will protect your pot and keep it looking beautiful for a long time. 